Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to continue to take a look at sprites here uh, using Zim in Adobe Animate. Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework at zimjs.com to code creativity. We've been doing a whole bunch of tutorials, so hopefully you've seen some of the others. If not, you might want to go check them out. All right, uh, in the last tutorial, we were looking at a sprite sheet that was an explosion. So that looks like this. And it was basically a grid of columns and rows. And therefore we could say, hey, make a sprite from this picture with this many columns and this many rows. Uh, if, by the way, it doesn't quite end there. Uh, this one does, it just fades out. But if it doesn't end, then you can also specify the count. Anyway, that's one way to make a sprite sheet. However, often sprite sheets are packed in uh, 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 use, using something called Texture Packer, for instance. And here's an example of a sprite sheet for that. So this is a sprite made by our friend Antonio, who also uh, illustrated our little Dr. Abstract fellow and characters on the Zim site. Um, so remember that this sprite is his. You probably don't want to use this in any final projects yourself. But uh, for educational purposes, okay. So this sprite is packed in there. You see that, how it's packed like that? And therefore, you can't just specify uh, a number of columns and, and rows. It won't find the right frame. You need the data as well. So there is data, which is um, looks like this, spreadsheet.json. So there's the image. Here are the frames. So this data gives us where the frames are. We've also added some data to the end of that one to say, hey, when the sprite is stopped or when we run the stop label, then that's where it will be. If we run a walk cycle, it will be these frames. And if we run the shoot cycle, it will be these frames. OK, um, so let's bring all this into Adobe Animate and see how to bring in a sprite that has been packed, as in if it's in Texture Packer. Maybe before we jump into Animate, let me show you where we explain more about this in a couple places. One, one is in, under the code. It's a new feature right here called Interactive Animation. It's also in the news section. So anyway, Interactive Animation. Ah, there's Dr. Abstract animating from this sprite sheet. And then down below, we talk about the code to be able to do that. And then here's an interactive example. Why don't we show this complete interactive example at the end of the tutorial? But there is a resources for that, a zip file and a video and article on how to do all of that as well. But we want to show you now how to do it in Adobe Animate. So we'll go to Animate. We'll start up uh, a, new, a new file here, so from the presets. I'm choosing a very high preset and creating. There we go. That will bring in our, um, oh, we haven't brought it in yet. No, sorry. We need to bring in uh, to center our stage and to, to bring in the HTML, uh, Zim Shim, and so forth to make Zim all work here. We'll import our profile that we made earlier in, in the very first one. So we're importing our profile, and now we can see that we're bringing in the Zim Shim, and we're centering our content. We hit OK, so we're all ready to go. Let's save the file up. File save as, and we'll call it number 18, and Sprite 2. OK, 18 and Sprite 2. And let's have. Actually, we probably could have used some of our info from file open. Do I have a recent of Sprite? Yeah, so here's Sprite. And if I F9 to get some code, and why don't we grab most of that code, and uh, I'll, I'll do some editing on that when we pop on over to uh, Sprite 18. No, 17. Close that. Come to 18 and paste it in here. That'll just save us a little bit of typing here. So first of all, we're number 18. And sprites, and this is from text 
your packer. I think there might be a way to make sprites as well from Adobe Animate. I think you can export as a sprite and you, that might work. Um, you also might try Zoe. Zoe is a create jest tool. So if you go to createjest.com and then look under tools, you'll see Zim there, but you'll also see Zoe. It's a way to make sprite sheets with create.js sprite data um, from Animate. So have a look there. Okay, so coming on down, we will load, I think, should we find that folder? Let's see, what do we have in that folder? We had shoot. So let's grab shoot, sprite sheet, uh, JSON, and then sprite sheet.png. Okay, so shoot, sprite sheet.json. So this will be shoot. We'll have a shooting sound for when we shoot. Yay. And sprite sheet.png and sprite sheet.json. J S O N. That's the data file. And these are all inside of assets. If we were loading this in Zim without Adobe Animate, we would just load that right into the frame call. But when we're in Animate, the frame's already been made, so we're using the, the load assets method of the frame. We can call this shoot here. De shoot. <laughs> De shot. I can do it. Sorry, a little, little under the weather. <laughs> uh, a new odd, and this will be shoot itself here. We won't need a pane. We won't start the application that way. We won't have a warble. We will have a sprite, though, and it will be called Space Guy. We'll do some things in there. Uh, okay, we'll get rid of all this stuff. Okay, so we'll do some things in here, and then we will center Reg on the stage. So uh, last time we specified the first three parameters being the image, the calls, and the rows. There's other parameters too. And if we want to load in from a JSON data, that JSON data has the image in it. So we don't actually need to say the image anymore. All we have to do is tell it the JSON file. We don't need the rows and columns either. So we'll go directly to the squiggly brackets here and say, hey, the JSON file for this sprite is sprite, oh, in quotes, I'll copy that, sprite sheet.json. There it is. Okay, so uh, that should work. And we also want to run it. If we were to just run it, dot run, in say one second, here's what it would look like. Are you ready? Can you imagine what it'll look like? <laughs> So not bad. It walks and it shoots, but then it stops. So if we want to run the walk cycle, then we want to run the label called walk. If we want to run the shoot cycle, then we want to run the label called shoot. And if we wanted it to just stand there, well, we could probably uh, run the one called, I think it was stop or stand or something. Okay, cool, that works well. Um, here's where we're doing the running. That's the time. I can't remember what parameter the label is. It's probably maybe even the next one, but if we want, we can say, bring it down here and say time, one second, comma, label, colon, run. Uh, or was it walk? <laughs> I can't remember, I think it was walk. You ready? Uh, no, must not. Oh, it did. It, it ran the walk cycle, but we forgot to loop it. So we'll probably want to loop that walk cycle, comma, loop, colon, true. There we go. He's sort of sauntering along there, isn't he? <laughs> so there he is on his walk cycle. Wow, very nice. All right. Well, how do we make press on it and have him shoot? If we want it to walk a little bit faster, which maybe I do, like 0.7 seconds. And let's have a look. There he is, kind of motoring along. Okay. Make it a bit, a bit slower. And let's make it so that he shoots. So down below, we can say space guy dot on. We'll put a mouse down event on him. 
house down. We'll call this arrow function. We also would want to make a cursor on him so that we're telling the people or the users that he can be pressed on. So that just gives us a finger cursor, a pointer on it. And space guide on on mouse down. So inside here, we'll play the sound, shoot dot play. And we'll also run a different label, space guy dot run. And we won't bother looping. We'll do these two things here. So a time of maybe I don't know, 0.5, a little bit shorter. We'll do a shoot. OK, let's have a look. What do you think? Here we go. So there he is. As I mouse over, I get the finger there from the cur. And I press. Ooh, he played the sound. He shot. But then he stops. He stops. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> OK, so if we want him to continue to run here, there's a couple things. Probably the easiest thing to do is just say call. So uh, we can call a function when this animation is done, when this run is done, just like in Zim Animate. So Zim, Zim, this run of the sprite is based on Zim Animate. So most of the features, like 99% of the features that Zim Animate has, um, can work here in run, such as uh, calling a function when we are done. Uh, if we're looping here, we could do a loop call and call a function every time the sprite loops. If we were rewinding, which could do, but he sort of moonwalk backwards. We could call a function when he rewinds. Um, if we call wait there to wait, then we can call a function when we wait and when we've waited. Anyway, here's the call. Uh, we call an arrow function. Doesn't have to be an arrow function, but usually we do. And in here, we're going to basically run him again. Which would be space guy dot run. Yeah, that all seems good. Control enter. Here's one. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Do you like that? Isn't that nice? So uh, that's how we we do that in in Zim. There's probably ways to set up all of that and animate as well, so you may not want to do it there, but we're just showing you there's lots of sprites out there because the sprites are a way that games are made, so lots of sprites out there, a lot of texture packer data, and now you can go grab some of those and bring them in like so. Those are just in the same, those are in an assets folder in the same folder as our, F, as our FLA and our index page here, and there's some interaction with it. Uh, we can do a lot more, though, with Zim than this. So let me just show you where you can find those resources. So out on the Zim site, that's where we were over here. Boop, 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 boop. Out on the Zim site, we have that interactive animation page. I mean, there's other places as well, the docs for sprites, and we've had lots of sprite examples under examples. But this is a, a really good site we just made it called interactive animation and there's a zip file that you can grab for that here's texture packer a link out there by the way the data that gets made from texture packer you can export to CreateJS in the in the full texture packer there's a free version as well just press on that uh, there's an example of some sprite sheets that have been dropped on there and you can just download the PNG download the JSON file. There's a couple formats. Either of these formats will work with Zim as well. Zim will just convert those formats to the CreateJS format. So don't worry about that. Um, anyway, that's a link to Texture Packer. There's a simple example right there that I believe loaded the Texture Packer. Yeah. And if you go Control U, you'll see the source and there's the source right there. Just quickly, Where's the texture packer stuff? Well, anyway, it, the, you can see that example as well. Um, 
by looking in the zip file here. So if you look in the zip, the uh, the texture packer JSON format, the, the, the one that's different, is in there. It should be pretty straightforward. There's a vidicle, a vidicle, <laughs> nice, a video and an article that um, talks about all of that stuff. However, this is what I wanted to show you was the whole bunch more that we can do in Zim. You ready? Let's check it out. First of all, you'll notice that we can change direction by moving the cursor. We can change the speed. So there he is walking slowly and here he is walking quickly. And when he walks quickly, the whole scene goes quickly. Wow, isn't that neat? So let's shoot. We're shooting a random number of times. So every time we press, it shoots a random number of times. Isn't that nice? Like, look at that scene go. So what we've done is we put the sprite in what's called a dynamo. A dynamo is a dynamic sprite. Uh, that's Zim's name for it anyway. That allows us to change this, the speed of the sprite based on something else, based on a slider, or based on where your mouse is, etc. So then we took the dynamo and we added it to an accelerator. An accelerator is a way that we can change the speed of a whole scene. In the background, we've also got scrollers. So each of those backgrounds is a scroller. We're scrolling them at different speeds so that it creates this parallax effect where the things in the back go slowly, middle is middle, and front is fast. Anyway, those are all scrollers. We've added the scrollers to the same accelerator. So the whole scene, the scrollers and the dynamo or, or dynamos are added to the accelerator. Then we control the speed of an accelerator or the accelerator with our mouse. And that's how all of that's set up. So that whole procedure is explained in the videos uh, there on the interactive animation site and in the um, articles on Medium. Isn't that great? And thank you, Antonio, for this lovely artwork. I don't think you'll find any platform out there that has um, sort of an easier dynamic sprite uh, creation than that. It all sounds fun, you know, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, put the sprite in, the ex in a dynamo and put that in an accelerator. It's like, oh, and then control that all with the motion controller. We could almost do that in one line of code. Almost, if we just pack all that stuff in there. But anyway, isn't that nice? All right, I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully that was fun for you. And uh, you know where you can find some more resources on sprites that have been created in Texture Packer. Once again, you might want to check out Zoe. Um, it's a Create Jest tool to export from Adobe Animate as well. Have a great day or night. Um, you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash slack if you have any questions about this. And I'm looking forward to doing more tutorials for Adobe Animate. Cheers.